Hey everybody, it's Matt Gottschall, and this series is going to be about my trip to Peru. I'm leaving tomorrow, and I'm going to do the old Inca Trail trip to Machu Picchu. It's going to be a four-day trek, and I'm going to start out just like my Kilimanjaro series, which I'll link to right here in the description box, with what I'm going to pack. If you're going to Machu Picchu and you're watching this video, it's probably because you're looking for what to bring. So I'm going to break it down for you. I've done a lot of long-distance backpacking in my life, so I know what to bring on most of these trips. Now, I'm not going to give you a comprehensive list of everything I'm bringing to Peru in general. I'm talking about my backpack and what's going in it and what I'm going to carry when I walk. Most of the things that I bring on a backpacking trip serve more than one purpose and they're absolutely essential. I don't bring too much because I know that I'm going to be the one carrying it. So, let me explain to you exactly what I'm bringing and why I'm bringing it. If you're going to be shopping for this stuff, I'll try and tell you a little bit about what to look for if you're going to be buying some of this gear. I've laid out all the things that I'm going to be putting in my backpack right here on this blanket. This zone is for my clothes. Over here I have accessories, my sleeping bag, and my boots. And then you can see the backpack that I'm bringing right there. It's a 65 liter pack by North Face. It might go without saying that a backpack is one of the most important pieces of gear that you need for this trip. I'm bringing a 65 liter pack, which is bigger than the bag I brought to Kilimanjaro. The one I brought to Kilimanjaro was 42 liters. But the reason why I got a bigger one is because I'm going to be carrying a little bit more stuff than I did on Kilimanjaro because I'm not hiring a personal porter to carry all of the excess gear. Most of the backpacks that you're going to find these days are internal frame backpacks. This is an internal frame backpack. You can see that there's no structure visible that gives the support against your back. An external frame is the other kind that you might see, but those are considered old fashioned now. They have the frame that comes up and you can strap a lot of things to the outside. I used to have one of those, but they're hard to come by now, so I'm transitioning to these internal frames. The next thing that's equally important as the backpack are your boots. You need a good pair of boots. Do not try to do a trek like this in tennis shoes. These kind of boots give you really good ankle support, they're going to be waterproof, and they're going to keep your feet comfortable and dry as you're walking for miles and miles. One thing you want to look for on the boots if you're going to buy some is Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is extremely waterproof. They make some other ones that have a plastic lining inside the structure of the boot. And that is another way that they keep it waterproof so that your feet don't get wet if you step in a puddle or mud or rain. Make sure that you put a lot of time into taking good care of your feet. Good boots are part of that puzzle. While we're on the topic of boots, let's talk about bringing extra boot laces. These are easy to get at your local REI or most shoe stores, but they need to be thin and really, really strong to fit through your eye hooks. Most people say, oh, well, I've never broken a lace on my boot. Well, if you do, it's a really sad day. The next thing in the foot department are silk sock liners. These are super valuable to me. They reduce the friction on your feet, and so they help prevent blisters. They can also keep your feet cool and dry. You'll see that these are small, and they don't take up a lot of space. That means that you can basically double the use of your hiking socks. I wear these the first day, and then I can take them off and wear the socks alone, or I can just change the pair the next day. It enables you to cut down on the number of hiking socks you bring, because you can wear one pair more than one day without them getting extremely smelly. Alright, next on the list are socks. I prefer Smart Wool Mountaineering Socks. They're the only ones I know of that come in this red and gray color, so they shouldn't be hard to find. Now, these socks have the most padding of any sock on the market, in my opinion. They're also really comfortable. They're not really made of wool, they're more like polyester and wool combined, but rather than making your feet hot, they really help to regulate your temperature. Overall, I'm bringing three pairs of socks for the trek. Two of these, and one pair that are just a little bit smaller and lighter weight. If you combine these with the sock liners that I showed you, you're going to be off to a really good start. I wear the sock liners under these, and I can get two days out of these, or even three, depending on how many pairs of sock liners that I bring. Rounding out the foot department, and one of the most important things that you can bring is a blister kit. Now, I'm not going to go into big details about total first aid, because every trek is different and you're going to have different resources available to you. For this, I'm just bringing a few minor things, but my blister kit never changes. What I have in here are a variety of sizes of bandages for whatever situation I might need. I have moleskin, which is really important for blister care. Depending on where you buy this, it might only come in one size because it's not a super popular item at the store. So you might have to go to a couple of different stores to get different sizes. This one, for example, is thick. I don't know if you can tell how thick it is, but if you compare that to one of these, it's a lot different. This is a lot closer to a band-aid thickness. It's important to have different types of moleskin. 
because they have different flexibility and they're going to stick to different parts of your feet better. The next thing you might be surprised to see in my blister kit is a sewing kit. Am I going to sit around sewing stuff? No. I'm going to use it for the needles. Sometimes you just have to drain a blister. It's not ideal, but you know, it has to be done sometimes. On that note, I'm always sure to have a good supply of alcohol prep pads. Unfortunately, these only come in boxes of 100, so if you know anybody who goes to a doctor or a dentist's office, have them grab a few for you. Otherwise, you might have to buy a box of 100 and just make an investment in it. These are really important for sterilizing the needles and the area that you're going to be working in because you don't want an infection. I have little wipes that have antiseptic on them so that if I do get a cut or a blister, I can put some of this on and prevent any infection that I might get. A little bit of Neosporin never hurts. And of course, if you're going to be dealing with moleskin, you need something to cut it with. I bring this little knife because it's super sharp and it can double for other purposes as well. This is the only knife that I'm going to bring on a trip like this. If I was going on a different type of backpacking trip, I might bring more knives or bigger knives, but this is all that I need. The last thing I'll mention that's an optional item for you, but could be important, are a good pair of gaiters. Gaiters basically have this loop that goes under your boot and they go around your leg and they cover the opening between your leg and your boot. I don't expect to need these a ton, but I might need them in conditions where it gets really muddy. If you go to places where it gets muddy or snowy, or you're hiking through really tall grass or something, these are really helpful to keep stuff out of your boots. If you go snowshoeing or do any kind of backpacking where you might get up above your ankles and some sort of stuff, you definitely want to bring them. Now let me run you through the clothes real quick. The most important thing about clothes on a backpacking trip is the material. Yeah, you want them to be lightweight, but if you get the ones of the right material, they're probably going to be pretty light. I always tell people, don't wear cotton on a hike. The reason is that it absorbs sweat. You don't want to have a wet shirt while you're hiking. It can cause rashes, it can cause a lot of rubbing, and it can make you really uncomfortable. Plus, if it rains, it won't dry out quite as fast. You want something that wicks away water and that can be quick drying and doesn't absorb a lot of your smell. Because let's face it, we're going to be wearing the same clothes maybe multiple days. And if we're going 10 or 12 hours and we're hiking and camping, those clothes aren't going to smell very good after one day. So putting them on feels really gross. These clothes of this material are going to cut down a little bit on the way that they hold that smell so that you can feel a little bit more comfortable while you're out in the bush. I've got these four shirts. Now what they all have in common is that they're either 95% or 100% polyester. That means that they're going to wick away the moisture like I'm talking about. They won't hold it, they quick dry, they're super light, and they're really good for doing any type of exercise or long distance trip. The next thing I've got are a couple pairs of pants. These are the zip-off pants that can double as shorts. I always want to get as many purposes out of something as I can. So these can go either way, depending on the weather. This pair is 100% nylon. It's really strong, it doesn't tear very easily, so you can walk through stuff and you can rub up against rocks, and it also dries really fast. They're also super light, and it comes with this built-in little clippy belt, so that I don't have to bring a belt. This pair is 77% nylon, 23% cotton. Like I just said, you don't really want cotton, but with such a small percentage of cotton, these are pretty good. These are super fast drying, really light, and really tough. I won't spend too much time showing you my underwear, but I'm absolutely not bringing cotton underwear. That is the one place that there is no exceptions. The worst thing on a hike is if you get chafing. Chafing is awful, so avoid it at all costs. Bring something other than cotton if you at all can. These are 90% modal and 10% lica. I'm not super familiar with the characteristics of those materials, but they're basically the same feel as the polyester and nylon stuff. They're really soft and they stretch and they dry quick and they will keep you happy. The only piece of my first aid kit that I'm going to mention is Vaseline. You need Vaseline or something similar because if you start chafing, in my experience, that is the only thing that will stop it. I'm bringing one pair of long underwear and one long underwear shirt. Some people call these thermals. It's the same thing. There's a chance we might encounter some rivers and hot springs, so we're definitely bringing bathing suits. A couple of light t-shirts for sleeping and hanging around camp at night, and a couple pairs of just regular old cotton socks just for hanging around. When I get to camp at 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm just going to change and kick back and relax, and I don't need to be wearing wool socks the whole time. I'm not bringing another pair of shoes, just my boots and one pair of flip-flops. So let's move on to my exterior clothing. A lot of this is either designed for warmth or for dryness. Along the lines of using things for multiple purposes, you want to try and find things that you can layer up. So I've got a couple of short sleeve shirts and a couple of long sleeve shirts, but if it starts to get cold, I have this sleeveless vest, 
which will keep me a little bit warmer with no without overheating me. If it starts to get really cold, like down into the 40s, which I am expecting at night, I have this down Patagonia jacket. This thing is great because it's super light, it's very warm, it's insulated, and I can crumble it up into a really small itty bitty little space and stick it in my bag like this. As silly as it might look, I'm bringing a sun hat. Some of the sun hats that they sell, it look even worse than this. This I actually think looks kind of cool. But we're going to be up in the mountains and it's going to be really, really exposed. So I don't want to get sunburned. I got my good old fleece lined wool beanie that you saw in the other video. And I'm bringing a very lightweight pair of gloves. Okay, let's talk about rain. I always like to be prepared in case we encounter a rainstorm. Sometimes you're out in the mountains and you see a thundercloud coming and it just passes right by. But sometimes it rains on you for hours. It can even start hailing in the middle of the summer some places, depending on where you go. I always carry a lightweight rain jacket. This is just an outer shell that you can slip on really easily and it will keep you dry. In the rain department, but transitioning into the accessory department, I have a rain cover for my backpack. These are really easy to find at a climbing or hiking store that sells backpacking gear and they come fitted for the size of your backpack. So this one, I went just a little small. It's a 60 liter. Even though my backpack is a 65 liter, this still fits over it. I would rather go small than big because if the wind is blowing and stuff, it's going to be flapping around and not be ideal. A rain cover for your pack is super important because the last thing you want is for everything in your pack to get soaked. If you have things inside your bag, once the rain passes, you can take out dry clothes, you can take out dry socks, you can take out your sleeping bag and it's all going to be protected. But if you don't have one of these and you get caught in a rainstorm, you might have a really bad night. So be sure to protect yourself and bring one. Moving out of the rain department and into the accessory department, I always carry some sort of small cord. This can be used for a lot of things. I like to use it as a clothesline in camp if things get wet and I want to hang them up or just let them air out a little bit. You can use it to strap things to your backpack. If something breaks on your tent and you need to strap it down to stakes, you can use this. I can use it to make a little net to carry stuff if I have to. And there's really a lot of things that you can do with a little bit of rope like this. This is super strong and it's really small, so it doesn't weigh a whole lot. Maybe four to five ounces total. You're definitely gonna want a couple of refillable water bottles. I like the metal ones because they're really durable and you can refill them and they're easy to clean and they don't add a taste to the water. I feel like the plastic bottles definitely add a plasticky taste and camelbacks do the same thing. So I try to stay away from those and I use these stainless steel water bottles. Depending on where you're going, you might want to bring some iodine tablets or some water purification tablets. There's a good chance that there's a little bit of bacteria or waterborne pathogens that are in the water that your body's not used to. Once you're used to them, it might be fine, but if you're just going for a couple of weeks, it might shock your system and make you really sick. So it's always a good idea to purify your water if you can't boil it. I always carry a headlamp. I don't bother bringing a handheld flashlight because this can serve multiple uses and it can be on my head or I can just hold it if I need to. I bring one of these silly travel neck pillows for sleeping. It's deflatable so I can fold it flat and fit it in my bag. They sell camping pillows and you can bring all kinds of stuff, but I found that these take up less space. If you're planning to do the clothes pillow, which I've done lots of times, you should be prepared for a lot of discomfort because I'll tell you, clothes can be as hard as a rock, and it is not very nice to sleep on them. The last two items are related to sleeping. I'm bringing a down sleeping bag, and I'm bringing a sleeping bag liner. These kind of things are actually really useful if you're going to be going somewhere where it's really cold. This is made of fleece, and it just basically increases the warmth of your sleeping bag 10 to 15 degrees. I don't expect it to be too cold in Peru, but I do expect it to actually be kind of hot. So what I might do is use this and just have my sleeping bag unzipped kind of like a blanket because this will be a little bit more lightweight. But if you're worried about the warmth of your sleeping bag, this is one way that you can upgrade without having to buy another one for $400 or $500. Another thing I like to bring is a little travel towel. These towels are made of some sort of material that's super light and dries really fast. It's just nice in case you see a river and you want to jump in the river or you want to wash your face or you go to the hot springs or whatever. It's great to have one of these. Just like I said with my first aid kit, I'm not going to go into that video here, but I am going to bring one. I'm also going to bring some personal items, which I won't bother spending time on. Everybody has their own tastes. You bring a toothbrush, you bring some toothpaste. If you have the opportunity to wash your face, you might want to bring a little bit of soap. But just remember that everything that you bring is going to add weight to your bag. So don't bring too much and cut out as much as possible. You should always have some chapstick or Blistex and sunscreen, maybe a little bit of bug spray, but try not to load up on cosmetics and lotions and all kinds of things because those things definitely add up. 
you will feel five pounds on the trail. I guarantee it. So cut down your weight as much as possible. One thing that I do want to address in the way of personal items is that a lot of people like baby wipes for camping. Baby wipes are great because they can make you feel like you had a bath or a shower, you know, relative to what you've got going on during the day. And uh, they're pretty much disposable so you can just bring a Ziploc bag and carry your trash out with you. Now these are actually something that I've come to really like. They're called Fresh Ends. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it looks like you can. But uh, this company basically is making these individually wrapped, non-toxic, biodegradable, alcohol-free, moist towelettes. Now they have uh, a lavender scent, which is all natural, and I personally find that a lot more pleasant than using baby wipes. Baby wipes have that weird, like, soapy kind of smell to them, and I don't know, something about their texture and the way that they feel, it's, 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 not, it's weird. These are a really nice alternative to it. You can get these at fresh, freshends.com and I'll put the link in the description box. Remember, just because they're biodegradable doesn't mean that you should leave them behind. Always carry out everything you bring with you, even food. If you're going to be flying with your backpack, especially checking it on a plane, it's really highly recommended that you bring some sort of bag to put it in. This is to protect the clips inside because they're going through all these conveyor belts and getting thrown around that it's really easy for one of your clips to get caught somewhere and to get broken. And if you arrived for a trek <clears throat> with a broken clip, that might be a catastrophe. And you would probably have to pay a lot of money to get a new backpack while you're there. So just to avoid that, you can get one of these real simple cotton bags from REI. And uh, these are big enough to fit a whole pack inside. If you get one of the bags that are made for a pack, they might be a little bit stronger, but number one, they're more expensive, and number two, I think that they're super heavy. So once you get there, you're gonna have to be carrying that thing around, and it weighs almost a pound. This weighs like next to nothing. This is like a pillowcase. So I'm just gonna go with this, and if I have to replace it, you know, it was like seven bucks, so I can just replace it really easily, whereas those pack cover bags can be anywhere between 40 and 60. That pretty much does it for my backpack. You'll notice that I didn't mention a tent, a cook stove, or a sleeping pad. And that's because those things are being provided and carried by the outfitter that we're hiring. We're going to rent the sleeping pads there, so that just cuts down on the amount of stuff we have to fly with. In addition, they're going to provide us with a tent, which is really nice. I have a tent that I could use, but if we don't have to lug one down to Peru, and we can just use theirs, then it's great. They're going to carry all the cookware, the food, the stove, and the propane, and things like that. And that's really good because when you're going on a multi-day backpacking trip, sometimes you have to carry more stuff than you can carry yourself. And you need people then to support you. And then you need people to carry stuff just to support the supporters. So your outfitter should put together a pretty well-rounded crew and carry a lot of these things for you. It's not a cop-out, it's a necessity. There's no way that you could be carrying 80 to 100 pounds each on your back and feel happy about it. These things that I'm bringing and saying are based on tried and true experience. I'm not getting this out of any book, I'm not going on online and reading blogs, and that doesn't mean that you shouldn't, but I'm telling you that from my personal experience, this is what I'm bringing on this trip. I've done this a lot, and I can't prepare for everything, but I do know what I can bring and what I can leave. So whether you're going to Peru or wherever it is that you're going to go on a long trip, you should check the weather before you go, know what you're going to be getting into, know who you're going to be around, and what sort of services you're going to have access to, and adjust your pack accordingly. Don't forget your passport, and everything that you're going to bring for days on the front end or the back end of the trek is up to you. You can determine your own city clothes and hotel living. That's easy. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, post them in the comments or send me a message, and I will get back to you. Good luck. And that's that. We're ready to go.